Excuse me. Spare change, sir. Uh, sure. Wait, aren't you a world-renowned biochemist? I was. Until AlphaFold replaced me. Hello world, it's Siraj, and the AI research lab DeepMind just made the code and data set for their state-of-the-art protein folding system titled AlphaFold, publicly available for anyone to use for their own projects. So I tested it myself on my own laptop, a MacBook with a broken key that I haven't fixed in six months, and using it, I was able to predict and visualize different protein shapes given genomic sequences. Now I'm going to show you step by step how to do the same thing on your own computer from installation to visualization and of course explain how it all works. Once you understand it and can run it for yourself, you'll be able to use it for your own applied AI project, be it in health, sustainability, or materials design. And that project will look very impressive on your portfolio because using AlphaFold, DeepMind, a company with zero credentials in biochemistry, won first place by a large margin in a biannual protein folding competition called CASP, beating 97 other groups, including many billion dollar pharmaceutical companies who've been working on this for years. AlphaFold, like the ice cream cone rotator, is the definition of disruptive technology. And since it was just made public, you now have this incredibly powerful tool to use for your own projects, or even to compete in the next CASP competition in a few months since it's open to anyone. For decades, biochemists have been trying to be able to predict how a piece of genetic code will fold into a protein, a very intricate three-dimensional structure. And this is called the protein folding problem. Most people, myself included, aren't thinking about this problem at all. In fact, for most of my life, I just considered proteins to be a nutrient that helps build muscle. But it turns out that proteins are so much more important than that. In fact, the word protein is derived from the Greek word protas, which means of primary importance. And that's a perfect description because almost every biological process that's required to keep you alive is carried out by proteins. They are nature's own machinery. Think of them as evolution's nanobots. Researchers have estimated that there are between 10,000 to several billion different protein species, and each of them perform a different task in your body, from digesting food to fighting infections. And the reason these proteins are able to accomplish such a wide variety of different, very specific tasks is due to one simple property that they all share. They fold. The process works like this. If we peer into one of the 30 trillion cells in your body, we'll find its instruction set encoded in DNA strands via four letters, A, C, T, and G, which stands for Welcome to Gattaca. Different combinations of these letters represent the features of living systems, similar to how ones and zeros do the same for computer systems. In this genetic code, groups of three nucleotides define amino acids, the building blocks of proteins, and there are 64 possible combinations of them. Given a certain amino acid sequence, a protein will begin to fold into its unique shape, a process that aims to target the most stable structure via the path that requires the least amount of energy. We can visualize this process using an energy landscape. As the protein folds, think of it like a ball rolling down a pit of despair. Just kidding. It rolls, it navigates around bumps. These bumps are paths that require extra energy, so it avoids those until it finds the point with the least energy. Does this process sound familiar? It's similar to how neural networks learn the process of gradient descent. They try to find the network values that will minimize not energy, but an error value. And as it turns out, this is the optimization strategy that AlphaFold uses. So the goal is to take as input a genomic sequence and then output its predicted protein structure. This protein structure can be visualized in either two dimensions or in three dimensions using two key features, the distance between amino acid pairs and the angles of the chemical bonds that connect those amino acids. The most successful techniques in this space before AlphaFold involved taking fragments of different protein structures from a protein database and assembling them using an optimization technique called simulated annealing, which unfortunately doesn't involve a ninja sword. This is a process that involves guessing a protein shape, 
then finding correlations between different protein sequences to iteratively refine its structure. This process works well enough, but can be computationally inefficient because the search space of possible structures is so vast. Another successful technique has been to compute what's called the multiple sequence alignment, or MSA. The idea there has been to find similar protein sequences from a protein database, then align them with the target sequence. Once aligned, they can be used as input to a neural network, which will output predictions for where certain amino acids make contact with each other. AlphaFold used three neural networks during the training process. The first neural network, a convolutional network, predicted distance pairs and angles. The second convolutional network estimated the accuracy of a given protein structure. And the third, a variational autoencoder, generated a protein structure. But to be totally frank, it's unclear if that's exactly how it worked. That's just my best estimate after analyzing their documentation. They submitted several papers, one to Nature and one to Proteins, but both had some contradictory information. And the neural architecture described in both papers was also clearly different from the programmatic architecture that they released on GitHub. Hey, where's that fancy variational autoencoder you mentioned? It's okay though, because at least the code works. So let's dive deeper into the code ourselves so we can install it and run it. The first step is to set up our local Python environment. Let's list out the dependencies they used in order. There's of course Python for programming. Absal lets you do tasks like logging errors, testing and adding command line flags to run parameters. NumPy enables matrix math operations. Six is a library that helps smooth over differences between Python versions so that they're compatible. Setup Tools opens the doorways of perception. Wait, that's something else. Setup Tools facilitates packaging Python projects. And then there's Sonnet. Sonnet is DeepMind's internal neural network library built on top of TensorFlow. It centers around the concept of a module, and these modules are totally standalone from one another. For example, they could be, there could be, they could be different components of a neural network, like activation functions or convolutional operations. Or we can define an, an entire network as one module, and they used TensorFlow probability for helping define the many probability distributions that were used for predictions. Okay, so now on to installation. I found it pretty easy to install AlphaFold. First, we create a virtual environment. This is a self-contained directory tree that helps resolve conflicting dependency issues on our system. Then we activate it using the source command. Once we have our virtual environment set up, we can install all the dependencies by pointing to the requirements.txt file. Python will automatically install all of those dependencies in that file for us. Once our environment is set up, it's on to step two, downloading the data. But first, I got contact points and them torsion angles. I make proteins, don't you get it tangled? Fold and viz, fold and viz, fold and viz, fold and viz. In order to access their data set, you just click on the link on, in the readme. The input data is big AF. It's about 44 gigabytes. So make sure you have some space on your hard drive. The input data will be a zip file, and each directory is a different target protein from the last CASP competition. In each of the folders, there are three files, the TF record file, which contains the protein features, a target pickle file, which contains the distogram, and the target RR file, which contains the contact map derived from the predicted distogram. Both of these files in the contacts folder aren't necessary to run the model. They are just there as helper files, so we don't need to run inference on our model on these targets ourselves to derive these. The next step is to download the model itself in the form of checkpoints. These are the weight files. There are two network weights, one for a distogram prediction model and one for a torsion angle prediction model. And then there's another distogram model that runs in the background, which is just used to improve accuracy. Each directory has different model configurations. Once downloaded, we can run inference. We first have to drag and drop the input data into the alpha fold folder, and the same for the model weights. Then in the run eval.sh shell script, we can define the location of the model, where the weight files are, the target protein we want to predict. When we run the script, it's going to launch 
four replica models for the histogram predictions and one replica for the angle predictions. Then it'll ensemble or combine all the op outputs of the histograms into a single contact map. Once we have that contact map, we can download CMView, a protein contact map visualization and analysis tool. If we load in the final RR file, we can visualize the 2D contact map. And the related tool, Reconstruct, can reconstruct 3D structures from that contact map. If you don't want to take the time to download and run this locally, just if you just want to visualize some proteins to just explore, go to web3dmall.net. Just type in the four letter protein ID from any protein in the protein database or upload a relevant file to visualize it and play around with it in your browser. Pretty amazing stuff. I can't wait to see what you build with AlphaFold. That's the coding challenge for this week. I've got a submission form with instructions for you in the video description, as well as some great learning resources. So hit subscribe, like the video, and happy learning.